Yeah. Hi, Scott Orling with Cinema Magazine. Back in 1932, there was a film release called The White Zombie, starring Bela Lugosi. And in a strange way, it introduced the zombie genre to Hollywood. Well, 80-something years later, the zombie genre is alive and kicking many different incarnations. And here with the latest is Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, writer and director Christopher Landon. Much can be made about what George Romero has contributed to the genre going back to 1968 to Night of the Living Dead. As a filmmaker, how much has, has that influenced you? I mean, where has your template been set? Well, I mean, I, I'm a huge Romero fan, um, and I grew up watching all those movies. I mean, from Night of the Living Dead to Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I took from, from Romero is that even though um, it's very much, I think, considered a horror film, there's still a bit of, of satire kind of buried in there. Um, and so there was always humor, especially, I think, in, in, in Dawn of the Dead. Um, and if you look at a lot of the, the background zombies, you know, they were real life zombies, but you had like a clown zombie and a nurse zombie and they kept reappearing in the film. Um, and so for me, I think that it was interesting to see sort of little touches of humor even in, in that. And so for me, um, you know, I wanted, obviously this is a horror comedy and so we needed this to be as funny as possible. But, you know, a, a big thing for me with this movie was, uh, was to break as many zombie rules as we could, because I think everything's been done already. Um, so that's- Is there a Bible? Is there a zombie yeah, there book? There is. There <laughs> literally is. Zombies there, must do this. There is, a, there is a zombie Bible, and it's kind of like, are they fast zombies? Are they slow zombies? You know, and all that kind of stuff. And for me, this was about like, how can we mine this, this little subgenre for as much humor as possible? And so a lot of that had to do with, you know, having fast and slow zombies, having animal zombies, um, having zombies that still have retained a certain amount of their personality. Um, and so when people see the movie, like, there's, a, there's a zombie that sings. There's like a musical number um, in the film. So we, we went pretty outlandish with it and just kind of threw the rule book out because well, it felt like it didn't apply. And obviously in this type of film, there's the gore element. And yes. you talked about the humor element. Yeah. But where you really ratchet it up is the sexual element. I, mean, I think this is the first time in a zombie movie we've been to a strip house. So thank you, Christopher Landon. <laughs> I actually think there is one other movie, apparently, because I just saw this the other day. Someone said like that there is like a literally a, an entire movie that is a zombie stripper movie, which I didn't know about. But anyways. But talk a little bit about those two components, adding the humor and the sexual element, which really we don't see a lot. So for me, a big, you know, apart from, you know, the, there were, I had a couple movies that were huge uh, inspirations for me for, for making this. And one of them was, was The Goonies. Um, because I wanted this movie to have a, a certain kind of, of old school 80s vibe. Um, but then another movie that was a really big influence uh, was Superbad. Um, and Superbad, I thought, really nailed um, the, the gross out humor without ever kind of crossing a line that made, made it feel inappropriate, you know? Like even though it was, there, was, there was stuff in that film that was disgusting, it was still funny and it still managed to somehow work. Um, and so we really wanted to push the envelope here. When I came onto this movie, it was a, uh, a PG, PG-13-ish movie. They were trying to, to, to do that, and I kind of felt like nobody's gonna go see that movie. Like, no one, I just found it, it was gonna fall in between two audiences, and so I wanted it to be a hard R movie. And part of that was bringing in the kind of sexual humor um, and pushing it forward, because it's really about these, these three guys who are going through, they're growing up. I mean, they're about to become men. And a huge part of that is sort of dealing with your sexuality and dealing with all that kind of stuff. So it was fun to push it. And you mentioned uh, The Goonies, which if those of you that remember those films back in the 1980s, and one of the strong components of it is it empowered young people. They were the ones that had to save the day. Right. And as we see in this movie, don't want to give too much away, but it's these scouts that kind of have to rescue the town. What kind of message, or what are we saying to people who are such at a vulnerable age in their teenage years of where do I fit in, you can make a difference. Right. Well, if parents allow their kids to see this movie <laughs> in the first place, which they should, um, you know, I think if there's a message in the movie, it's not necessarily tied to the idea of like ordinary people saving the day, which it is um, on the surface. But I think really what the movie is about for me is a, it's a movie about friendship. Um, and it's a movie about the value of friendship. And these three guys on this night when their town is, is, is attacked by zombies, um, they're at a crossroads with each other. And it feels like they're gonna break apart as friends. And over the course of one night, they realize that their friendship is the most important thing that they have. Um, and so for me, that's the message. I think a lot of kids, 
you know, I mean, it's, it's a universal thing. I think, you know, when you're in high school, you know, you're going through a lot of changes and there's a lot of pressure on you and to be in a certain kind of social circle and whatnot. And I think it's important, the message that I love in the movie is that, you know, none of that stuff really matters. And what matters is the sort of like the core friends that you have and keeping them close. And just a last question for you. One of the cool things, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with the requirements for being a good scout, are the, is being prepared. Right. Is to be able to use whatever's around you right. to that. So let me talk a bit about, for you as a filmmaker, what's the coolest toy you get to play with on set? What is the one thing that you have to kind of work with? Ah, that's a tricky one. I, I, well, the, the terrible answer is because they're not toys, they're, they're humans <laughs> as actors. I mean, I think that's my favorite part about, about making movies is that I get to work with these unbelievably talented people and they will take things that I've written and things that I've imagined in my head and they make them 10 times better. Um, and so that really is my, my favorite part. But I mean, all the tools are awesome. I mean, in this one, it was great because not only did we get to use some, some CG, but like we actually got to use a lot of old school practical effects, which was really cool for me and something I really wanted to do. So we have like puppeteered animals and it was, a, again, going back to that kind of 80s vibe. So that was a really fun thing to play with. Well, Christopher, I can't thank you enough. Best of luck with the film. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And this is Scott Orlick. Till next time.